throat chakra. What do I want to say about the throat chakra? Okay, so this is a chakra that I personally have had to do a lot of work on. Okay, so um, the throat chakra is located right here at the base of your neck. Um, this is your center of communication and expression of your truth and your emotions. Um, the color of the throat chakra is traditionally blue. Um, the gland that is associated with it is the thyroid gland. Now, if you've got an issue at the throat chakra, it could manifest as trouble communicating your thoughts and ideas, or maybe having a hard time expressing yourself, especially your emotions. And I know that's been a problem for me sometimes. I'm scared to speak up and say what's on my heart uh, for fear of being judged or, or something like that. Um, it could also um, cause problems with your ability to manifest or be creative because part of the manifestation process is getting crystal clear words about what it is that you want. Um, if it's overstimulated, you might find that you're talking all the time or too much, that anxious kind of talking. Um, if it's underactive, maybe you've got some social anxiety and you're not speaking up enough or something. That's kind of more what I do, believe it or not. Um, and also, this is an area where anxiety and fear and addiction can live. Now, uh, physically, you might have thyroid issues, underactive or overactive. Um, teeth, gum, dental problems, throat infections, uh, TMJ. I've had all those problems, okay? And I'm really happy to say that I've seen a lot of improvement, though, when I've been working with these crystals that I'm about to um, share with you guys. And the first one is aquamarine. Now look at this beautiful thing. I mean, aquamarine is a semi-precious gemstone. When you look at it, I just feel so uplifted and happy and refreshed. I mean, it seems to capture the energy of like waterfalls or a lake or the ocean. It reminds me of dolphins. It's a happy stone. Um, oh gosh, okay. I know the name of this skull, everybody. Look at this skull. This is my aquamarine skull. Can you believe it? Um, she's a beauty and she says, hello. Her name is Hanali, like the, the name of the town on the island of Kauai where Puff the Magic Dragon comes from. Um, the first time I ever saw that town, I burst into tears because the, it was so beautiful. And this uh, skull reminds me of that energy and aquamarine reminds me of that energy. So aquamarine is like the best gemstone I have found for any throat chakra issue you might have. Um, it can help you clear and balance and activate this throat chakra. So it really helps you with your communication, especially if you um, might need to have a difficult conversation with somebody and you're wanting to find the right words coming from your heart and you want to express yourself in a way that the other person can receive and understand, this is going to help with that. It's going to help move you into your heart chakra and to find the right words infused with love. Um, this one also can help you with any anxiety that you might have. And especially if you have a fear of public speaking, um, like I had a little bit of fear to come on here today, right? So I was working with my aquamarine before I came on. Um, this is a stone that helps you work. It, it connects to the water element, right? So it has that cleansing, refreshing, flowing quality to it. You could take an aquamarine and you could use it over any chakra that needs to be cleansed, cleared, and purified, and it will help to clear that chakra. Um, it also is known as the stone of release. That's what Naisha asked Dion calls it, and I, that really resonates with me. So this stone can help you to let go of all kinds of things, attachments, patterns, relationships, grief, um, old emotional states, even physical clutter. It can help you to release those things out of your life. So if you're somebody who likes to hold on and you need a little bit of help to let go, work with aquamarine. Now, this is also known as the fountain of youth stone, and we could all use a little bit of that. At least I sure like that quality. Um, I believe that it's associated with the fountain of youth because it has this rejuvenating, regenerative quality. And that's because it works very strongly with your endocrine system, all of the glands. So it activates the pineal, the pituitary glands. And uh, when you're working with the pituitary gland, that's your master gland that regulates multiple bodily processes. And you know it can help you with your hormones, your metabolism. Also, when you're working with those higher glands, that can awaken more of your psychic abilities. So if you work with aquamarine, it might also help to strengthen your psychic um, abilities and your intuition. Um, and it's a fantastic stone for your thyroid. 
Okay, so I personally have an underactive thyroid um, and I've worked with aquamarine at my throat. Um, I have a really beautiful pendant that I like to wear. And when I wear this on a regular basis and I go get my blood tested, usually they can step me down a little bit on my medicine. So it seems to be boosting uh, my thyroid function to a degree. So anyone who has a thyroid problem, you might want to give that a try. All right, so the next one I want to talk about is really interesting. It's one of my favorite stones for the throat chakra. Um, it's blue apatite. It's kind of got this beautiful kind of almost bluish green color to it actually. Um, and I have a, a skull <laughs> of blue appetite. Check this one out. Just a beautiful skull. Now this one is an androgynous skull. It's not male or female. I asked the skull for a name and it just gave me these symbols and it says oh, my name can't even be translated into English but if I had to get, tell you what I'm about you could call me Star Bridger because I help connect to the different star places okay so Star Bridger says hello so blue appetite it's a great throat chakra stone but it also has a multi-dimensional activating quality that can awaken your psychic ability and it brings in a cosmic connection. This stone makes you clearer, it makes you brighter, it brings out your inner radiance, and it expands and sharpens all of your clear senses, your clairvoyance, your ability to see, your clear audience, ability to hear, your clear sentience, your ability to feel, um, clear cognizance, all of it. So it boosts all of that, but it especially boosts your channeling abilities. So I think that's really fascinating, but it's going to powerfully activate your throat. It's going to strengthen the throat chakra and your ability to express yourself and communicate really facilitates public speaking. And also it's good to keep, if you're in a group setting and there's a lot of people who are trying to communicate their thoughts and ideas, it helps to harmonize group energy and to, for groups to have better communication amongst each other. Um, and it's my top choice for awakening channeling abilities, which I believe comes through the throat chakra. Um, it will strengthen that channel and this stone will simultaneously work with your third eye chakra, your zeal chakra and your crown chakra. So it awakens your psychic abilities and it opens that channel so that you can access higher dimensional guidance and beings. And it helps you to step that down to the throat chakra and being able to translate and communicate that to other people. So it helps you with channeling. It'd be great for anyone who is trying to speak light language, anybody who's um, channeling specific beings, or any teacher of higher spiritual esoteric information would benefit from using this stone, or anybody who wants to teach any subject at all will um, have good luck working with this stone. Um, now, physically, if you're having dental problems, um, this is a stone that strengthens the skeletal system and the teeth. It also can boost that metabolism in your thyroid, so that's really fantastic. And this is another one of those versatile stones that you can use over any chakra you want to. It's going to balance the chakras and it's going to clear the chakras. It has this refreshing flowing quality to it. It kind of feels rhythmic or pulsing to me and it pulses negativity out of your field. Um, negative thoughts, emotions, chakra blockages, even psychic debris in your field. So this is a good one just to keep you nice and clear. Um, in meditation, it's going to help you to tap into the Akashic Records. But here's the part I really, really like, guys. Um, this is a stone that um, is supposed to be a magnet for UFOs and ETs. Um, and Robert Simmons, uh, the crystal expert, he says that working with blue appetite uh, can attract the attention of the blue skinned beings. And that really is interesting to me because there's a lot of galactic beings that have blue skin. Some of the ones I know about, um, Andromedans can have blue skin, Arcturians, Pleiadians, the Syrians, those from Vega, even the blue avians you may have heard of. But like when I work with Starbridger over here, um, I have an easier time connecting in with, I have a Pleiadian guide. He's really funny. He, I don't know why his name is Oslo, but that's his name. And he does everything through humor, he makes you laugh. He's just a clown. Uh, I have another Arcturian guide, a, a, an Arcturian guide, and she's like a, she's a superstar, man, but she's like a, an energy technician, and she's almost like a, a reality hacker of, of sorts, and I can really connect with those guys much easier with my um, wonderful blue appetite skull, so just wanted to share about that one. So any questions about the throat? 
Well, that um, the blue appetite, just for those who are uh, looking how to spell that, it's not like ap it's not appetite as in hungry, but I'm pasting it into the chat room right now. I just want to make a comment though about the aqua marine. It looks almost identical to the color of the water here in Siesta Key. Uh -huh. I thought that was interesting. Um, I do have a question though. How quickly will it be before people start feeling the benefits of these gemstones? Yeah, it, that, that is a good question. Sometimes uh, the, you can feel the effects almost instantaneously. It's amazing. Like for the one example, like what I was talking about when I had like strep throat and I put this necklace on for 15 minutes and all of a sudden all the symptoms were gone. So sometimes these stones, you can feel it within um, like immediately or within the first 10 or 15 minutes. Um, one thing I should say is that when you're doing this work of placing the crystals on the chakras, they, the general rule of thumb is that you want to leave them in place for a minimum of 11 minutes. That's what I learned in my crystal healing training, because it takes the body about 11 minutes to fully process and integrate the crystalline frequency. So give it at least 11 minutes. Um, now, for instance, when I'm working with aquamarine to boost my thyroid, um, I feel like if you're trying to heal a, a long-term issue like that, um, wearing something, wearing like an aquamarine pendant every single day is a good idea because it's going to have a cumulative effect. So sometimes if you're trying to heal something that's, you know, a little bit more difficult, just regular use, and it might take a longer time. So I don't know if that answers a question, but sometimes it can be really quick and sometimes it's cumulative over time. And everybody's sensitivity levels to crystals and stones are different too. Like when I first started working with the crystals, um, I wasn't that sensitive to feeling the vibrations or the shifts. But after many years of working with them, um, I feel a lot more and I feel it more quickly. And so sometimes something might be happening, but we just might not feel it. If, if that Could you close sense. your eyes and just sense what kind of crystal is under your hand? Can you pick up that energy like that? Um, yeah, if I close my eyes and like I'm doing that right now, I can feel, um, I can feel variations and differences, but I don't know if I've honed it to the degree where I can tell exactly what it is. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. I'm sure there are people on this planet who, who are farther along and they'd probably be better than me. <laughs> what is, is it possible to have too much of a crystal? For example, if you put one under your pillow and slept on it for eight, 10, 12 hours, is it possible to have too much of something? Um, you know, that's a good question. I do believe that it, in most cases, you're probably going to be okay um, with with that, um, okay, let me see how I explain this one. There, it is true that you can get a little bit overloaded with, with crystal frequency. So for instance, you know, we've got a really big crystal shop here in Austin, Texas. And if you're very, very sensitive, I know some people when they walk into that crystal shop, it can, they can feel like they're getting a little bit overwhelmed and overloaded with too many frequencies. Now here's something that I don't usually get that feeling. Um, although I have had that happen once or twice, but here's why, and here's what I would recommend. I have literally have, before I walk into a space where there's a whole lot of crystals, I set a strong intention and I put like an energy shield around me and I program my energy, energy shield in this way. I say, I am open now to receiving all of the perfect crystal energies at the perfect levels that I can safely integrate at this time. And if there's anything that's too much, this shield will block that out. So I actually set an intention that when I'm around crystals, I'm going to receive what I need in the right amounts and that energy is going to go where it needs to go. Now, I have a whole room of crystals that I'm sitting in right now. And I actually set that intention at my door of my crystal room that when people come in, they're going to receive exactly what's for their highest good. And if something's too much, they're not going to absorb it. And I feel like that works for some reason. I think that's a great idea to do that, to program the crystals, to interact with the people that come mm -hmm. into your house. What a wonderful idea. Right. Um, we have a mutual friend, Michelle, who has GERD. What would you recommend for GERD? Uh, you know, which is, I, I would assume it's a throat chakra kind of. Yeah. What, um, what exactly is GERD? Well, she ends up 
like it kind of sounds gross, but she regurgitates what she eats. She has oh, she okay. follow any food or anything. It might be solar plexus, but she oh, oh, right. can't get any further than like here, and it seems to come back up again. So okay, yeah, yeah. Let me think about that. Um, I'm hearing I'm hearing sodalite. I'm hearing sodalite because uh, sodalite um, has more of a, a stabilizing, balancing effect. So if there is some kind of an acid or weird condition that needs to be like calmed and grounded and balanced, um, I think the sodalite is going to have that more balancing effect. And it's also a, a good healing stone. Um, I, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm hearing, sodalite. 